see a good-looking man entering your life. Who? I see Chicago, but I don't know why. I'm getting that in your work, you can be skeptical. But in your personal life, you're an open and curious soul. Casadega plays a large part in your life. I see you've been here many times. I see... What's wrong? The meeting is over. Well, why? Universal Wi-Fi adapter. Jeff wanted me to get him one so we can play each other online. Oh, goody. Another reason for him not to do his homework. No. Homework comes first. I think this is a motivational tool. Hey, Callie. It's not recorded. Uh, actually, he's gone all week. Sorry. Uh, Jim Longworth. This is Heather. Heather Thompson. Nice to meet you. Uh, yeah. Jim Longworth. Uh, what she said. Oh. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Okay, can I just leave these samples here from record? Do you mind signing for them? No problem. Uh, hey, I gotta go. I gotta... Uh, thing to uh, attend to. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Yeah, Heather, right? Right. Right. <laughs> okay, who was that? A friend. Really? Just a friend? Really just a friend. Just a friend, right. You say so. <laughs> Welcome to Casadega. This town gives me the creeps. Why? It was founded by psychics and mediums over a hundred years ago. So cops don't like setting foot in this town. You really believe in that stuff? No. Maybe. Yeah, the department's used a medium from here a couple of times. A woman named Renee LaFleur. She helped us find the body of a 16-year-old girl. Like a guess? <laughs> While working on the case, this LaFleur woman tells me an estranged relative is gonna get very sick and that I should make peace with him. Six weeks later, my uncle gets diagnosed with cancer. Make peace? No. Nah. He was a mean son of a bitch. Now, my point is, who wants to know their future? Not me, and not any cops I know. Why'd you stop? That'll be the local traffic law. Shh. Hear that? Even the dogs don't bark in this town. Who? Funny. Real funny. <laughs> Some say I don't play well with others. I was a damn good detective in Chicago, until a disagreement with my boss encouraged me to pack it up and make a change. So I put the Windy City in my rear view and headed to the Sunshine State to kick back, play some golf, work in my tan, maybe write the occasional speeding ticket. Yeah, well, that didn't work out. Welcome back, Mr. Sanchez. It's the floor. This is Detective Longworth. This is Caitlin Zellman, the victim's wife. I'm sorry for your loss, Mrs. Zellman. I wish to offer my services to help find whoever did this to Patrick. Your relation to him? He was a friend. Same line of business? Similar. He was a psychic. I'm a medium. And the difference is? A psychic can tell you your past, present, and future by reading your energy field. A medium can communicate with the spirits of the dead. Good to know. Well, we'll call you if we need you. You'll call. Either he has really slow reflexes, or I see a fatal flaw in his psychic ability. These people have walking business, so they keep their front doors open. So we don't know if the killer was invited in. It doesn't feel like a robbery. I mentioned how this place gives me the creeps. Can 
and give us a minute? Of course. Does your husband have any enemies? No. How long have been married? Ten months. Oh, newlyweds. Yeah, first time? I'm divorced. How long? Eleven months. Wow, quick turnaround. How'd your ex feel about this marriage? Not great. His name? Evan Bratton. He uh, is a merchant mariner. Shipped out? No, he just returned from eight months out to sea. An ex-husband with hard feelings, huh? My ex would never have done this sort of thing. Well, that in there looks pretty personal. Nothing more personal than, a, than an ugly divorce, don't you think? All right, well, look, Mrs. Elman, uh, I'm going to ask you to walk inside, maybe take a look around, see if you can see anything that's missing. Think you can do that? Okay. Yeah, okay. Here, you take her in. Take Mrs. Elman in. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sarah Weston? You found the body? Uh, yes. It says here you had a psychic sense that Patrick was dead. That's right. How does that work? I can't explain my gift. I've just always had it. Uh, well, I'm not psychic, so I'm going to need some details as to the circumstances. I was giving a reading across the street in my house. Who to? Uh, a woman, Dr. Brittany Newhall. She called me from D.C., said she was going to be in town. She had been to Patrick and wanted to try someone different. I think the fact that this woman had been to Patrick triggered my feeling him, which led me to sense his death. The sense of the killer? No. Oh. Well, maybe I should speak to a medium to get Patrick to say who killed him. Are you making fun, detective? A little. You'll see. Where do I find this Brittany Newhall? She's at the hotel. There's only one. Oh, so I don't need my palm read to find it then. Tamarack. Sorry, what? Your wife. Oh, not married. Your wife will be from Tamarack. Yeah. So, how long have you been getting readings from Patrick Zellman, Dr. Newhall? About three years. My mother lived nearby. Before she passed away five months ago, I would come and see Patrick whenever I came to town. So, two, three times a year? We also had some phone readings. So, after all this time, why change psychics? I've seen others, off and on. Yeah, but why were you looking to change now? When I first started with Patrick, I thought that he was adding insight to my life. Lately, I just, I didn't get that. You're a medical doctor, right? Yes. Many people in your profession use psychics? Professionals of all types see psychics. Well, yeah, but I get a lump in my head. I want a doctor to go to a book, not a tarot card. I can separate out the two. I'm not looking to channel dead relatives. I just think that science doesn't always have the answers. You have to drag me all the way down to Homestead? I don't like to go into a suspect's apartment alone. You do realize I don't carry a gun, right? You yeah, have bad guys don't know that. Evan Gratton, can I ask you a few questions? Can I come in? What's going on? Your ex-wife's husband was killed this morning. What? Yeah, stabbed in Casadega. You haven't been to Casadega recently, have you? Never set foot. Huh. I've been a sea for the last eight months. Oh, yeah, heard when you came back to a little surprise. Yeah, you could say that. Instead of being greedy with a hug, I was greedy with divorce papers. So I'm guessing you're not a Patrick Zellman fan, are you? I never met the man. Well, what kind of man steals another man's wife when he's gone? Oh, nice. What is that? Zulu warrior shield from South Africa. I just brought it back. Nine months is a long time to stew about being two-time. <laughs> Believe me, man, I'm over Caitlin. Got myself a new lady. Congratulations. Whatever. Caitlin was always into that psychic crap. Wasn't surprised she ended up with one of those whack jobs. Whack jobs, huh? Got an alibi for yesterday? I do, yeah. I was with Tammy all day, just ask her. Tammy! Hey, Tams! Did the wife find anything of her husband's missing in the house? Just one thing. His reading glasses. His reading glasses? Bought at your friendly neighborhood drugstore. Huh. Detective Longworth. Ms. LaFleur, what can we do for you? It's more what I can do for you. I had a vibration today. A vibration? Someone near you is going to die very soon. Near him? Be very careful. See? Nothing good ever comes from me being near you. 
Nothing. Jackass a few times in my life. Never a mule. Yeah, well, giddy up, mule. What's the street value on this thing? Most of it's more likely to give you a nasty discharge than any kind of an actual high. Oh, well. That'll keep the man down. <laughs> there you go. Thanks again. No problem. See ya. Bye. Any problems getting Jeff to do his homework? None. Oh, he must be motivated. Yeah, that must be it. You got something for me? Forza Motorsport. Really? Hit max RPMs last week. Mm. You look busy. Yeah, I'm trying to catch up so I can go to this white coat ceremony. What's that? It's where the dean hands us our first white physician coat. It's mostly symbolic. Sounds kind of special. Well, it is kind of special. And there's this after party that's supposed to be fun. You need a date? I mean, if that's something you think we could do or not. I'm concerned about Jeff. I thought he liked me. Jeff loves you. I just think it might freak him out if we went on an actual date. Oh. Oh, I, I didn't realize. I didn't. Okay. Um, where are you from? Where am I from? I've been meaning to ask you for a while. Where are you from? Coral Springs. Coral Springs. Why? <laughs> no reason. No reason. Hey, Jim. You know what? If life has taught me anything, it is to grab the bull by the horns, so to speak. I need a date to the White Coat Party. Interested? A date? Yeah, it'll be fun. Open bar, lots of food. Cheesy DJ. Um... She's right. Sounds like fun. But, oh, okay. Great! It's a date. Here's my card. We can work out the details later. Just give me a call. Okay. Hey, see you. Bye. She, oh, is that aggressive? Guess you'll soon find out. You wanted to see me? Uh, Patrick Zellman wants you to do a background check. Criminal, personal, financial. Uh, Jim, Jim, one sec. This is Adam Quinn, president of the Casadega Town Council. This murder has shaken our community. Something like this hasn't happened in Casadega since that young couple five years ago. Right. The young couple? Uh, yeah, Paul and Linda Gilbert. They left Casadega and haven't been seen or heard from since. We never found their bodies, but we presumed foul play. I want to offer the assistance of my town. Your town? Oh, wow, that's nice. Did your town help uh, five years ago with the young couple? Yes, but for some reason, they were unable to make contact. What, did the dead have low or high frequencies? How does that work? That part is a mystery. <laughs> One word for it. Call you if we need you. Uh, would you excuse me? Jim, so is it your goal in life to offend everyone or just the people I have to tread lightly around? Why do you have to tread lightly around, Mr. McGoo? Because despite your skepticism, they have helped the FDLE in the past. Uh, yeah, that is scary. What is Renee LaFleur's history with the FDLE? Actually, she's who I'm talking about. She's helped in a number of cases. I know it's politically tricky to involve a psychic or a medium in a criminal investigation. Why? What is she saying? That's what she's not saying. You think she's hiding something? I think they're all hiding something. I was under the impression you weren't planning on using the town psychics or mediums. I wasn't. Then why were you going to go see Ms. LaFleur? If her abilities are good enough for the FDLE, they're good enough for me. Besides, I think she's hiding something. Maybe a reading will tell me what it is. 50 yards. Make a legal use. You're lost, aren't you? I didn't say that. We were just here yesterday. I'm taking another route. I'm taking in the countryside. 30 yards. Make a legal U-turn. You're lost. Approaching right. This thing's going in and out. Turn left. You know, some people say the psychic energy in Casadega impacts these GPS devices. Or maybe we're just in a dead zone. Every time I'm near you, I'm in a dead zone, apparently. But you do know psychics just say very general things that we fill in the blanks, right? What is general about someone near you is going to die very soon? That sounds pretty specific to me. Approaching right turn. Turn left. Turn left. Oh, lady, you are not helping. Whoa, 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 where are you going? Where are you going? Watch out!
Is that blank general enough for you? Well, I brought Patrick Zellman's wedding ring, like you asked. Place it on the table. Where is Dr. Sanchez? Uh, out guarding the car. Does your car need guarding? He thought it did. Why is Elma's wedding ring? Any metal object of his would do. It's called psychometry. Metal objects belonging to a person, dead or alive, contain energy that helps transfer information from that person. Just not that couple that went missing five years ago, huh? Sadly, I could not connect to their spirits. As a medium, most of my work involves death. I just wish I could prevent a tragedy sometime. Do you... Always. In case you'd like to refer to the session later. I'm getting that Patrick knew the person who killed him. And that the person who killed him has been in his house. To kill him? Yeah. You won't find answers there. This person returned to the house after you removed his body. This person is afraid and returned to the house after killing Patrick. The answer is in his house. How's he doing? A few scratches, a little ringing in the ears, but it seems okay. Look at you. Not a scratch, huh? Next time, you're opening the front door, my friend. He seems like his normal style. All the same, you should get a CT scan, make sure there's no swelling or brain bruises. Yeah, go, go. Be good. Thanks. All right, the gas is turned on in the house. That in combination with some form of combustible caused the explosion. Oh, it's combustible. We haven't determined that yet. Still under investigation. Not a brand I'm familiar with, but I'm not a smoker. Get a country of origin for me? Right. Yeah. Oh, and I checked out the victim, Patrick Zellman. When he was 18, he had an assault with a deadly weapon charge that was pled down to a misdemeanor battery. And his financials? Three times in the last two years. He took out big chunks of money, only to have even bigger deposits shortly thereafter. Six weeks ago, he withdrew almost all his money. This last time, it wasn't followed by a big deposit. He died sort of broke. Where'd his money go? Awful withdrawals were checks written to investment firms. Uh-huh. Follow the money. Oh, and can you look into a couple that went missing in Casadega about five years ago? Paul and Linda Gilbert. Find out where they were staying, who they saw, make a model of the car they were driving. On it. So, um, I'm curious. Do you really think Renee LaFleur sent you to that house to kill you? She sent us there for some reason. Well, what was the reason? Well, she said the killer had gone back there after the murder, and she said that the answer was in the house. Oh, and you just ran right over to look? I guess you're not such a skeptic after all. Oh, no, I'm a skeptic, but I am going to get her in for questioning. 132 over 70, not bad. Oh, so he's going to live? No, thanks to you. His MRI, CT, and chest X-rays all came back normal. Yeah. But do you know how much radiation was zapped in my body to get those results? He gets good news, he still complains. Hey, when do I leave? Guys! Uh, hey, so listen, about this white coat thing. White coat ceremony? The ceremony, yeah, sorry. Uh, I don't have to go. Why wouldn't you go? Well, you know, it might be a little awkward for you. Because of Heather? Oh, please don't flatter yourself. I mean, listen, Heather is a sweet girl once you get past the salesman and bluster, and she's carefree and fun, and you guys will have a blast. So, for you, it's okay. I mean, it's just a party. Yeah, but, you know, technically, you'll be there alone. Who said I'll be there alone? Oh. Well, well no one said it, just... Yeah. 
Blue Tail, that cigarette butt, is only sold in South Africa. Does that mean anything to you? Yeah. It means Evan Grattan lied about never being in Casadega. This guy's been around. Last place he was in was South Africa. Carlos, huh? admiring is in searching. Fine, but what the hell are we searching for? I don't know when we find it. Yeah, Charlie 16. Uh, just so you know, any suspicious boxes you're opening, I've made my quota of things that go boom. What do you got? Taped sessions with Lafleur. Why the hell would he have those? Hey, Dr. Fenton. Hey, Callie. How's that boy of yours? He's good, thank you. Uh, I have this thing tonight, the white coat after party, and I totally understand if you have much more important things to do. The white coat after party? Sounds like fun. Okay. Well, I mean, if you can't, I understand. Say no more. I'd love to go. You'd love to. But you know I'm married, right? So this is just, you know. Know what? Oh, of course. <laughs> Say no more. Say no more. Pick you up at eight. Eight is good. You have something on your nose. Yeah, you got it. That box I found in your apartment was your ex-wife's Caitlin's, wasn't it? I actually got me up in your stuff during the divorce. Recorded sessions between Caitlin and Renee Lafleur and with her future husband, Patrick Zellman. Dated 13 months ago. That's before Caitlin filed for divorce, wasn't it? I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm getting a strong feeling that you and Evan have tried, but you just aren't connecting anymore. Even when he is home, it's like he's a million miles away. I would always go to my dad for answers, but he's dead. If I thought my father would approve... Then ask him. What? Ask your father. Speak with Renee Lafleur. The dead reach out to her. <laughs> He must have felt like shit. Listening to this joker convince Caitlin to dump you and run off with him. Yeah, she was duped. Yeah, with the help of Renee Lafleur, and that just ate at you, didn't it? Stuck away in some cargo ship for months on end with only your magazines for company while your wife stooped some guy back home? You left a cigarette at the scene, got your DNA all over it. Okay, fine. I went there. Hell yeah. But not to kill him. I just wanted to tell him I knew what he did. I wanted to call him a home wrecker to his face. Yeah, then things got out of hand. I didn't lay a hand on it. Where's Caitlin during all this? This wasn't about her, man. This was about that son of a bitch disrespecting me by going after what was mine. Yeah, now he's dead. You can go and reclaim what's yours, right? I didn't kill Patrick Zellman. Detective, can I see you? We found Renee Lafleur. Well, you know, her vibration came true. What do you mean? She said someone near me was gonna die. Just happened to be her. Evan Grant had it in for both Patrick Zellman and Renee Lafleur. So what was Lafleur hiding? Coercion, fraud. Zellman must have convinced Lafleur to give a false reading. So Caitlin and her deceased father said it was okay for her to leave her husband, Evan, for Zellman. Hmm. I guess that's fraud in the spirit world. Yeah, and a good motive for murder in ours. Car could have easily pulled up here undetected. Evan's a big guy, wouldn't have had a problem with Lafleur's body. Only, it's not what happened. Why do you say that? Well, two things. Evan was a skeptic, like me. I mean, it's one thing killing a guy for boning your wife. Any non-believer would do that. And the other thing? Time of death. Which, according to her liver temp, while well, Evan Gratton was in custody. Oh, well, at least we know one thing we didn't know before. Whoever killed these people is a true believer. Meaning what? Meaning, Lafleur is dead because Patrick Zellman's killer was worried she'd contact Zellman's spirit. Dead mediums tell no tales. Anthony Batista. Thanks. Chris Beckler. Louis Cohen. 
came to see your friend, and it's so sweet. Yeah, you too. Oh, no, I'm afraid my motives are slightly more self-serving. These students are going to be doctors someday. Bailey Chimino. Oh, future customers. Well, if not actual customers, I mean, some of them can end up working for the pharmaceutical companies I represent or sitting on the FDA board that approves the drugs I sell. Callie Cargill. Congratulations. What was that you were just saying about them not being a customer? Jonathan oh, Carson. not all doctors go into practice. You know, some end up working for pharmaceutical companies, some end up going into research, some sit on FDA approval boards. Oh, <laughs> oh thank you. Uh, see you tonight, right? Okay. Jeremy Carvalho. Got the information that you needed. Yeah, I got something else I want you to do. See if you can find out where Dr. Brittany Newhall works in D.C. Got it. And I follow the money like you asked me. Patrick Zellman made four investments in the biotech industry. On the first three, he made a bunch of money. On the last one, he lost it all. And the other thing? Uh, well, as best as I can make out, psychics and mediums believe the burning of sage is a cleansing tool. Like cleaning the palate of negative energy after each vibration. Burns like what, like an accelerant? No, it burns too slow for an accelerant. It's more of a smolder than a quick burn. Kind of like a timer. Mrs. Zellman, been to your house lately? Just to check the mail. And maybe burn it down? No, I had nothing to do with that. Well, the gas was left on, so something set it off. I'm thinking it was probably the clump of sage that was found in your house. I mean, it's slow burning, so that would allow you to get away before the gas went off. I left the sage in the fireplace, and I didn't turn on the gas. Well, someone did. Look, some evil person killed Patrick. I, I wanted to cleanse my house of that presence. How did Patrick make his investment choices? What are you talking about? Well, he was heavily in the market, right? He was a psychic. He would get a feeling or a vibration about certain stocks. Just not very good ones. <laughs> I mean, come on, you're broke, right? Apart from the life insurance policy you're gonna get for Patrick's death. But that was from poor investment decisions. You think I killed my husband? Over money. We were just married. Yeah, that doesn't clear you, if that's where you were going with that. Yeah. Got it. But that phone call does, so have a nice day. So I didn't mention I was on an FDA approval board. That doesn't prove that well, I... No, it did. does, actually. The three biotech stocks that Zellman made his money on, and the one that he lost all his money on, just happened to be in companies that were waiting on FDA approval for drugs. And in all these cases, you, in your capacity as a doctor, sat on the committee making those decisions. I mean, what, did you have a deal where you shared the windfall? Did he renege on the deal? So you fed him bad intel? Patrick got information from me, but not how you think. Oh, well, how'd he get it? The first time, I think it was a true psychic event while he was giving me a reading. It's true. After that, I don't think he could get a read. So he would steer my sessions towards my work and then try to prompt me to give him information. And you know this because? I was suspicious, so I went back and listened to his readings. The tapes were all conveniently blank. But the only way I could know for sure was to give him false information and then see if he took it. So I sort of let it slip that a drug was getting approval when I knew that we were going to deny it. You know, the SEC tracks these big stock windfalls that Patrick had. You could lose your job, end up in jail from insider trading. It's a pretty good reason to kill someone. But I didn't. Sarah warned me to stay in D.C., not to come to Casa Dega. Wait, she warned you? Like, specifically warned you? I sent her my bracelet, and she gave me a phone reading. I didn't tell her any other details, but she's really good. Well, God, finally. I was beginning to wonder about you people. Someone with real psychic ability. Well, Sarah was right. You do have big trouble in your life. By warning you not to come to Casa Dega, she was trying to keep you from that trouble, but <laughs> you didn't listen, did you? I didn't kill Patrick Zellman. I didn't kill anybody. Well, I'm no psychic, but it seems to me that if you trust someone as much as you trust Sarah, and they warn you, you should probably heed their advice. Keep going! Keep going! Oh, Some people see psychics just use a little bit of intuition mixed in with a generous dose of bullshit. And you missed your calling, because you would have made one hell of a psychic. I already am one. Figured out what happened to Paul and Linda Gilbert, didn't I? How easy! Up, 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 up! 
We assume these two are the victims of foul play. Turns out it was just an accident. Once I figured out the make and model of the car and where they were staying, the vibrations just came to me. They were following their Mercury's first generation GPS system to get out of town. Which doesn't work very well in this area, which we nearly found out the hard way. People of my community couldn't make contact with them because they were submerged under 15 feet oh, of water, oh, detective. Yeah. I don't know anyone in Casadega who's a true believer who wouldn't act on a vibration if they thought it would save a life. You know what? I actually believe you. Where are you going? Finish our job here. Detective Longworth, I opened the mail today and found a letter from Patrick to me. Hi. Can I come in? Of course. Thank you. Oh, it's nice. I heard about Brittany Newhall. Yeah, we had to take her in. Is she okay? Oh. I wanted to talk to you about her state of mind. Okay. Yeah, you performed a reading for her on the phone? Yes, while she was in D.C. Yeah, and she sent you a bracelet? I used that for psychometry. Yeah, I know. Wow, that's a lot of crystals. <laughs> Uh, did she tell you that Patrick Zellman was using information that he got from her for illegal stock transactions? Ms. Weston? Yes. Uh, no. Did she mention anything about her job at the FDA? No. I'm gonna need a statement from you as to exactly what she told you. A statement, yes, of course. Are you all right? Would you excuse me for one moment? Sure. Easy at a local drugstore. It's over, Sarah. In my phone readings with Dr. Newhall, I got the sense that she was in danger from someone here in Casadega. She mentioned that Patrick was her only connection here. So I stole the glasses. I saw it clear as day. Patrick lost a lot of money because of Dr. Newhall. He was going to kill her. But you couldn't know that for sure. Five years ago, I did a reading for that young couple who disappeared. They were just passing through on their way to a wedding. I had the same undeniable sense that they were going to die. For five years, I've lived with the guilt that I should have done more. I couldn't live with that guilt again. You tried to warn Dr. Newhall not to come here, didn't you? I did, but it didn't matter. Even if Dr. Newhall hadn't come here, Patrick would have gone there and killed her. And I knew the police wouldn't listen. So you had to take matters into your own hands? I did what I had to do. Including trying to burn down Patrick's house. And then you had to kill Renee Lafleur because you're a true believer. You truly believe that Patrick Zellman is talking to her from the grave, telling her that it was you that killed him. She came to me, threatened to go to the police. You had to silence her. What's that? It's a letter that Patrick sent to his wife. In it, he says, uh, if you're reading this, it means that I'm dead. Killed by my own hand for taking a person's life. And he goes on to say why he had killed Dr. Newhall for losing all his money in the stock deal. But he didn't get a chance to kill Dr. Newhall or himself, did he? But you see, I was right. I saved a life. By taking one? Oh, no. I'm sorry. Two? I mean, it is just two, right? There's not someone else's body out there we don't know about. You know the difference between a psychic that sees the future and a psychic that tries to change it? Life in prison? Wow, you are good. <laughs> hey! Okay, I have some advice for you. After 10 p.m., avoid Dean at all costs, because by then he will be completely hammered. And trust me, you do not want to hear his war stories about working in the geriatric wing of Miami Dade. Good to know. Thanks for coming tonight. I know when you're at a party where you don't know anyone and you have nothing in common with anyone, that can be a real drag. That's no problem. I kind of feel like this in most parties anyway. Well, if you let me, I could make it up to you. My dad has a yacht. No. <laughs> a really big yacht. Do you sail? I don't, no, but I drink beer and I can hang my feet off the edge of the yacht. Sounds perfect. Oh, God, there's Dr. Yarnell, head of cardiology. I have to go grind him for a second, do you mind? No, no, go grind. Yeah. Hi. How are you? So, thank you. Wow, don't you clean up nicely? I was in a 
say the same thing about you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. So where's your date? Oh, she's over there grinding the head of cardiology. Uh, you? He's over there wishing he were the head of cardiology. <laughs> Think you're gonna fit in with this crowd? Oh, once you get past the power plays and the egos, they're relatively harmless. You know, I really did want to ask you to this, right? Why? Well, kind of hoped. <laughs> but, you know, I, I get that, you know, with Jeff and everything. It's just sometimes when you're mom, you have to put your kids' needs before your own. Right. Wait. So when I asked you whether it was all right to come with Heather... Wow. I really don't get you guys. No, you really don't. You look good up there, by the way. You know, white coat and all. It makes me feel like I want to come down with something so I can get a checkup. Yeah, I don't think I really should be doling out medical advice just yet, but thank you for coming. It meant a lot to me. You want to dance? You dance? I dance. Not well, I dance. <laughs> sure. It's time to slow things way down. So go ahead and grab a hold of that special someone and bring them in real close. Jeff, what's wrong? Oh, no. I'm sorry you're not feeling well, and it's, you were looking forward to this party all week. No, it's fine. It's not a problem. I'll, uh, I'll be there in 20 minutes. Okay. I love you, too. Bye. His first boy-girl party. Oh, that sucks. His first crush, his first dance. First kiss if he plays his cards right. <laughs> Hey, you want me to come with you? No, you came with Heather. You should probably leave with her. And not that I'm looking forward to the drive home with Dr. Fenton. A doctor and Dr. Student. You guys have so much to talk about. Actually, the only thing they have in common is the city we were born in. Coral Springs, right? Tamarack. Tamarack? I thought you said you're from Coral Springs. I grew up in Coral Springs. I was born in Tamarack. 